Hey gang, Stephen Marshall, KYLandlordLaw.com. Greetings from a very icy day here in Lexington. Uh, hopefully you guys are able to stay at home today, and so I thought I'd give you an update because we've had uh, several new developments in the rental industry that I wanted to make sure you got the information on. We have yet another new executive order that changes the fair housing game. Uh, back on his first day in office, President Biden signed an executive order asking all federal government agencies to review laws that prohibit discrimination based on sex to enforce those laws against di discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity. And so in response to that, earlier today, uh, HUD issued a memo stating that they would be interpreting the Fair Housing Act to prohibit housing discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity throughout the country. So HUD and all of its state and local agencies are now going to be accepting housing discrimination claims based on those two factors and that will go back through January 20th of last year, 2020. So up until now we've had seven protected classes that apply everywhere in the United States and I think we now have effectively an eighth or an eighth and an ninth, however you want to uh, look at it with sexual orientation and gender identity. Now, this is not going to be a change for you folks in Lexington, Louisville, and the other cities and counties in Kentucky that have already adopted local ordinances that prohibit housing discrimination based on those two factors. But it is a major change for the other areas in the state. Tenants and applicants everywhere in the country may now sue landlords for housing discrimination based on those two factors, sexual orientation and gender identity. HUD did not mention a specific definition uh, of those two categories. In Lexington, the local ordinance defines sexual orientation as a person being protected based on his or her actual or imputed heterosexuality, homosexuality, or bisexuality. It defines gender identity as being protected from discrimination based on having a gender identity because of a sex change surgery or because you manifest for reasons other than dress an identity not traditionally associated with your biological maleness or femaleness. That's how those categories are defined in Lexington. We'll see how uh, they're defined throughout the country going forward. I, ex I expect it'll be something very similar. So, new fair housing law, new protected classes uh, throughout the United States. Uh, turning to the state of Kentucky, uh, the state legislature has been in session since January. They have a short session this year. They alternate years. Uh, on the length of their session and this year's a, sor a short session and most of the attention has been on issues related to COVID. But I did want to point out a few pieces of legislation to be aware of. Uh, two bills, Senate Bill 5 and House Bill 10, that are both aimed at uh, limiting liability for property owners whose businesses and properties were required to remain open during a state of emergency, including COVID. And the gist of each bill is that property owners would not be liable for alleged injuries that arose out of the issue that led to the state of emergency, such as, or as long as the owner was not grossly negligent in following the health and safety guidelines that were in place at the time. So rental property owners, if this bill passed, you would not be liable for COVID related issues arising on your properties, either in your management offices or in your units, as long as you weren't grossly negligent in following the CDC guidelines that were in effect at the time. Uh, of those two bills, House Bill 10 is, is a bit simpler uh, and it is easily passed through the House and is now being considered, considered by the Senate. Uh, so we'll see, <clears throat> see where it goes, but I expect that that's going to get passed. Uh, the question is whether it'll, it'll be vetoed by the governor. House Bill 30, this is an interesting one, especially for me. Uh, this bill would allow property managers and other agents of rental property owners to file and prosecute evictions on behalf of the owner. 
Now, this bill has not moved out of House Committee since it was uh, first filed. I don't expect it's gonna go anywhere this session, but I did want to bring it to your attention. And then finally, Senate Bill 11. This bill revises the definition of criminal mischief in the Kentucky Penal Code, and it would uh, revise it to include the intentional or reckless destruction of residential rental property. That activity would explicitly be a criminal offense throughout the state of Kentucky, and if the damage is $1,000 or more, it would be a felony. Okay, lower levels of damage would be uh, different classes of misdemeanors, but $1,000 or more, it's a felony offense for intentional or reckless destruction of residential rental property. Now, Senate Bill 11 passed easily through the Senate. It's moved on to the House. Uh, it's expected to pass there. The only question is whether the, gover the governor will veto it. Uh, lots of times I see this bill getting referred to in the media as an eviction bill. It has nothing to do with eviction, so I feel like that there's a lot of misinformation about the bill that's out there. It, it really just applies to tenants who, on purpose, or without really any regard for the property, intentionally tear up your property uh, in residential rental property, and it would make that a criminal offense. Now, arguably, that's already a criminal offense under the criminal mischief statute, but this bill would make that explicit to every prosecutor uh, and every judge out there that, that that type of destruction and damage is a crime. So, brand new fair housing order that kind of changes the game for a lot of Kentuckians uh, and several pieces of legislation to keep your eye on. That's the update for today. I hope you guys are staying safe during these uh, snowy, icy, cold days. Uh, and I'm sure I'll be in touch uh, before too much longer. Rental assistance in Lexington is flowing. Uh, I still don't have any additional information on statewide what that program and what that processing is going to look like. Uh, but you can be sure as soon as I do, I will let you know. Got any questions in the meantime, please uh, email me if you want to work together, smarshall at tripleslaw.com. I probably won't be responding to questions on social media. That just gets too scattered uh, and too much of a problem. So if I ignore your question on social media, that's not personal. I just I answer all questions through email or phone calls, uh, and there's usually a, a slight fee attached. Hope you guys are doing well. Stay safe. We'll be in touch. Have a great day.